Hi, and welcome to this next video on support vector machines. So this is the second video on support vector machines, uh, where we'll take the formulation that we arrived at in the previous video, and then we'll try to rewrite it into a more convenient optimization problem. So concretely, right, the, the problem that we looked at before in support vector machines was that we wrote down this optimization problem where what we'd like to, to optimize is we would like to maximize the so-called function margin uh, gamma. And then, so the function margin was... Uh, defined as the, you take the label and you multiply it with basically the prediction you would make on the feature vector w is in a product x i plus b uh, and with that before you take signs and you want to say that this product is at least uh, gamma and then you force the norm of w to be one so that the, this function and geometric margin are all are both equal and so this is the formulation that we ended up with in the in the previous video and so this is just saying we're looking for the hyperplane that you see here in the picture the one with the biggest margin to the closest point. Okay, so if we look at this formulation here, right, there's a linear objective, it's just a single variable that we're actually maximizing. And this thing here is also a, I guess, a linear constraint. If you think like you have only W and B that you're maximizing, the Y i's and the X i is, are, are constants. They're just part of the training data. So it's a linear, it's actually a linear program if we ignore this last constraint down here, right? Uh, so, so if this last constraint had not been there, it would have been an easy optimization problem. But we also talked about uh, this fact that if this constraint was not there, that you could always scale W and B uh, to infinity if you had a separating hyperplane. And then you could drive up the, the margins of these gammas as high as you want. So it's it's necessary that it's there. But unfortunately, this, this constraint, we don't like it. Uh, it's a kind of nasty and in some sense a non-convex constraint. So, so we'll, that'll become more clear what we mean by that later. But we don't like this constraint because it means we cannot use our standard uh, to solvers to actually tackle this optimization problem. So we'll try to, in this video, we'll try to rewrite the problem into a more convenient form. Okay, so let's see. So here's, I guess, a, a first attempt. So what you could do instead is we could try and maximize the geometric margin. So the geometric margin is, if you have any vector w, uh, that is your uh, vector, your parameters, and your gamma hat here is the functional margin, the function margin, you're saying that I want the function margin on all points to be at least gamma hat, but then I'm at the same time want the geometric margin to be as high as possible. Right? This is the geometric margin of defined before, right? This is the actual distance to the hyperplane. You have to normalize by the norm of W. So we're kind of just in some sense moving this constraint up here instead. Uh, and so it's another way of dealing with it. So we'll say that we want to maximize the so-called geometric margin, right? So the geometric margin is the one that we had up here. Uh, the geometric margin on a point is the, uh, the label times this normalized, you normalize W by the norm of W, you normalize B by the norm of W, and you I use this uh, where you, you take the inner product between W and Xi and you normalize it all by this norm of W, which means that this geometric margin on a training example I is the functional margin on that example divided by the norm of W. So this is what we're, what we're doing here. So this is another version of the same optimization problem where right? we want to maximize this geometric margin, mean the distance of the nearest point to the hyperplane, assuming they're all on the correct side, uh, there's a sign to it as well. And uh, then we want to, uh, and this is just saying they all have to be at least this far away. Okay, so this is a new version of the same problem. Uh, we want to solve this maximization question. Okay, so right, the good thing now that we like after moving up is now we only have linear constraints, right? So we got rid of this uh, annoying constraint that we had before, there are only linear constraints left. Now, the downside is that this objective function, right, it's not a convex function and it also, you know, it's a ratio between, you have two variables that you're changing, like one of them is this um, the gamma hat here, and then you also have the whole vector W that you're taking the norm of. So, so we don't like this objective value. It's not clear at all how you can maximize this subject to a constraint like this one. So we'll have to use some observations to simplify uh, this optimization problem a bit more. And one of them is that if we look at this optimization problem up here, and if I have an optimal solution to it, like consisting of a W, a bias B, and uh, a gamma hat here, then what we can do is if we upscale all three of them by C, then it's still an optimal solution, right? So why is that? Well, if we upscale it all by C, then each and every one of these constraints, both the right-hand side and the left-hand side, upscale by C. So they're still satisfied by this solution. And also, 
that what happens to the objective value is that well the uh, gamma hat here in the numerator goes up by factor c but so does the norm of w down here in the denominator so it has the same value so it remains optimal it remains a valid feasible solution which means that for this optimization problem there's a lot of freedom right as soon as you have an optimal solution actually any scaling of it will be an optimal solution to this optimization problem and now the key idea now that we will be using is that uh, that to try and simplify this uh, this optimization problem at least to make it solvable is that we're going to force that it has a specific uh, function margin okay so in particular what we're going to say is that we would actually force that this function margin is one okay so let's see what happens if we try and and do this so basically uh what i'm claiming will happen is if we try to, to force this is that uh only thing that will change is that it will just the optimal solution will just have a very concrete scaling of w and b not you will no longer have this property that if i just upscale all of them by factor c it remains optimal that will not be the case anymore so so here's a claim of a new optimization problem the only thing i did was i set this gamma hat to be one that's a simple change now it's not obvious that this actually has the same solution right it's not so clear just immediately but let me try and, and convince you that indeed these two optimization problems have the same solution okay so uh, let's try to look at just an arbitrary hyperplane right so you have a hyperplane specified by a vector w and uh, bias b and now let's just introduce a factor c here that we can uh, move up and down so they, i guess these are every scaling of c gives the same hyperplane right so that's what we agreed already that if you just scale the c here by if you scale w and b by the same c it's the same hyperplane so for all c this represents the same hyperplane okay so if I plug in any concrete scaling here for any fixed C into the second formulation and see what objective value does it have, right? The objective value here is one over the norm of W. And if there's a C here, this is one over C times this, uh, I guess, base vector W, let's say. So it's one over C times this W. Okay. Now, this means, right, that I would like to choose C as small as possible uh, if I'm saying what is the best choice of C if I want to use this hyperplane. So any scaling of it is, is fine, but I want to use the scaling of this hyperplane. Then, of course, I should choose C because it hurts me in the in the objective value. The objective value gets smaller and smaller, the bigger C is. So I should pick C as small as I can to satisfy the constraint. All right. And of course, to make it as small as I can, right? Uh, if I have this scaling C in here, right, each and each and every one of these constraints, say C times YI times W is in a product with XI plus B, I right, can move the C outside. So each of the constraints, um, each of these left-hand sides have this value here. And of course, what I want, if I want it to still be a feasible solution, they all have to be at least one. So of course, I should find uh, basically the minimum, uh, the, the I that takes the minimum value, right? So that you know, I should push it down as far as I can until the first uh, value of i, the first training example, hits exactly one. Right? That's the, of course, the best choice I should do. I should find the the i that minimizes this. Now, if you look at it, right, you, you can see that uh, this is exactly if I basically if I keep c on one side and divide by minimum over i to the other side, then I get exactly the, like the minimum over i of yi times this w transpose xi plus b is exactly the function margin. It's exactly the definition of the function margin. Uh, so, so basically this means that, well, when, if I've decided that this is the hyperplane I want to use, then the best choice of c for that hyperplane is one over the function margin for this hyperplane, right? So that's what I mean here. So it's one over the function margin of this choice of w and b. Okay. So if I, you know, so this is the W and B as if C was not there, right? So one over the function margin of that W and B. Now, if I plug in this C into the objective value, the cost that I'm going to get is one over C times W, which is exactly the function margin over W. And so, which means that I recover exactly the same objective value as I would have gotten up here in the first formulation. Right, so, so what I'm saying is that if I solve this second formulation here, I'm getting the same optimal solution. The only thing is that uh, the hyperplane I get when I have a hyperplane that is optimal, what I will force is just, I'll just get a very concrete scaling of this parameter C. It will be set 
such that it's exactly one over this function margin. Okay, so, so this is just saying this is another way of rewriting the same optimization problem. And the scaling is the geometric margin that we saw up here. Okay, so now we're actually maximizing the geometric margin. So, so this is a formulation of an optimization problem that maximizes this geometric margin here. You're maximizing over W and B, one over the norm of W subject to uh, these constraints that YI times W transpose XI plus B is at least one for all the training examples. This will find the hyperplane with the largest margin to the data. Okay. But unfortunately, this is not a convex objective function still. So we'll need a few more tricks. And the last trick is that, well, maximizing one over the norm of W is the same as minimizing the norm of W. And now the really nice thing is that if I minimize the norm of W, that's the same as minimizing the squared norm of W. And minimizing the squared norm of W is also the same as minimizing half the squared norm of W. Right? So, uh, so these are just three. This, this half is not that important, but just make some calculations later uh, easier to deal with. And what I'm saying is that this new objective function is actually a convex function of the variables W. So, so this is something that we like, and we'll see more in more detail why we like this. But the claim is just that uh, we can change the maximization or one one norm W into a minimization of a half times the squared norm of W. And this one half here will just be convenient later. So this is now a, a new optimization problem. And this is actually the final version of it that we're minimizing all W and B half times the squared norm of W subject to these constraints. And there actually are efficient algorithms for convex optimization under such linear constraints that you can actually just use. Uh, so, so in some sense, uh, when we have a convex objective function and linear constraints, this is just an easy optimization problem. Similarly, it's kind of to the intuition that, that uh, gradient descent also did better for convex functions, you'll end up in a global minimum. So we'd kind of like convex things and we'll see in more detail in the next video why we like that this objective value is a convex function. Okay, so this is something we like. Okay, so just maybe to remind ourselves from uh, some videos ago, we looked at what is the definition of a convex function of multiple variables. So if I have a convex function of, if I have a function of uh, multiple variables, then it's a convex function if its Hessian matrix is positive semi-definite. And remember the Hessian matrix is the matrix that contains all the second order derivatives, right? In the i comma jth entry, you have the partial derivatives of, uh, partial derivative of, the, uh, of the function with respect to wi and wj. Right. So this is this matrix that looks like this. So the first row has the partial derivative with respect to W1 uh, and WD in the last case here and so forth. So it's this matrix with all these partial derivatives. And this uh, matrix has to be positive semi-definite, which means that for any vector set, it must be the case that set transpose H times set has to be at least zero. Okay, so H is this matrix. So in our case, let's try to look at what is this H? Right. So, so what are all these partial derivatives? So what we can do is that we can start by observing, well, the squared norm of W by the formula here, right? It's just the sum of all the entries of W and that, that entry squared. So if I start by taking the derivative with respect to the first of the two variables, like so in the first row, we take with respect to W1, then we see that this sum, the only term in the sum that depends on W1 is the first term and it's W1 squared. So the derivative of that with respect to W1 is just two W1. The two cancels out the one half. So this is one place where it's convenient. So you just get W1 in the entire first row, W2 in the second row, and WD in the last row. So it's gonna look like this, W1 in the first row and then WD in the last row. And now what this tells us is we have to do the second partial derivative now. So we have to do uh, in the columns, we have to do with respect to W1 in the first column, with respect to W2 in the second column, with respect to WD in the last column. And as you can see here, right, the only terms uh, that don't disappear are the diagonal terms, and they become exactly one. So this becomes the identity matrix. So the Hessian here is actually the identity matrix. And now this means that if I look at now, I have to argue that this is uh, positive semi-definite. So I want to argue for any vector x. It holds that set transpose identity times set. Uh, is greater than or equal to zero. So what is set transpose identity set? Well, the identity function, it just identity matrix just takes set to set. So this is just sets in a product with itself, the sum of the squared entries of set. And of course, this is uh, greater than or equal to zero since we are just summing squares. So indeed, this is a convex function. So, so basically what we arrived at is an optimization problem. We're minimizing a quadratic objective. So this is the squared norm of W subject to some linear constraints. 
And this kind of optimization problem can actually be solved by freely available uh, software packages for quadratic programming. Just type in these constraints and you can solve it. Uh, but we will actually take a look at a more direct approach that are using this the concrete way that this optimization problem looks like. Uh, and this will be important, I guess, for some applications and you'll get some more insights into these support vector machines by trying to solve it directly. So what's coming up in the next video will be a short crash course on convex optimization. We'll just introduce the tools we need uh, to solve this optimization problem to get uh, make progress on it.